Welcome to a new video series on Chemistry Made Easy with Bright Edo. In this video series, I'll be solving top 100 chemistry calculation questions that cut across various topics in chemistry. Meanwhile, in each video, I'll be solving just five questions so that we can be able to assimilate and understand the concepts of each question. So let's quickly move over to the first episode. Now let's get into the video. Now, the first question says, determine the percentage composition of each element in lead 2 trioxo nitrate 5. And the atomic masses of the element that makes up this compound was given. So first of all, for we to be able to solve this question without stress, we have to know where this question is actually coming from in the subject called chemistry. Meanwhile, this particular question is on the concept which is percentage composition. Now, it must be noted that percentage composition... is given with this symbol. So, to solve questions on percentage composition, there is a formula that we must apply. And what is that formula? It is simply percentage composition, okay, is equal to atomic mass, atomic mass of elements in the compound, atomic mass of the elements in the compound, times number of atoms of that particular element. Okay, we're going to understand this concept better when we start solving the question. So, it is percentage composition is equal to atomic mass of the element in this compound times the number of atoms of that element in that particular compound over molar mass of the compound. Now, in this particular question, the compound is lead 2 trioxo nitrate 5. And I'm going to tell us how to get the chemical formula of this compound times 100. So, so solve questions under this percentage composition. This formula must be noted, which is atomic mass of elements in the compound times the number of atoms of that particular element over the molar mass of the compound times 100. Now, the question we have to ask ourselves is what is the chemical formula of lead 2 trioxo nitrate 5? Now, this is lead 2 trioxo nitrate 5. Now, what is the chemical symbol of lead? Lead is simply PB. And in this particular question, they were specific and they said lead 2. This is lead 2 trioxo nitrate 5. Now, trioxo nitrate 5 is actually a radical and it is symbolized as NO3 minus. To be specific, minus one. So what happens next is to simply exchange the charges of these particular symbols. So it means that two will come here, whereby one will come here without the sign. So two coming to this direction, we have this. And one coming here, we have this. Generally, at the end, we are to have the chemical formula of lead 2 5 to be PB1, which is here now. One comes here and two goes here. So PB1, NO3. So to actually separate the NO3 from this two, I have to put it in a bracket. So the chemical formula of lead 2 trioxo 5 is PB1, NO3. But to be specific, we just simply say PB, NO3. Because one, ap NO3, two. Okay? Because one appearing here does not actually matter. Okay? So we just simply write PB, NO3 into bracket 2. So this is the chemical formula of lead 2 trioxo nitrate 5. So how do we solve the percentage composition of each element in this particular compound? Now, first of all, what are the elements that makes up this compound? PB, one of them, nitrogen and oxygen. Now, to solve this particular question, I would prefer you bringing this compound to its lowest term. Now, this is what I mean. It means that I'm going to I'm going to make sure that this compound is simple as possible. So these two I'm seeing at the end of this bracket or at the end of the compound, we affect everything inside the bracket. Yes, it's going to affect it. So when that happens, we have something like this. PB, it must be noted that this two here is not affecting the PB which is late. So PB, two affecting nitrogen, we have N2. And two affecting oxygen, we have O6. 
because 2 times 3, which is for oxygen, it is 6. So this can be written as this. Okay, because using writing the compound in this fashion is going to be very easy for we to start solving this particular question. So let's quickly get over to the calculations. Now, it must be noted that in this particular compound, we have three elements, which is lead, nitrogen, and oxygen. So how do we solve the percentage of each element making up this compound? Now, the next step to actually take here is to basically calculate the molar mass of the compound. So let us calculate the molar mass of lead, 2 trioxone 95, which can be written as this or this. So let's do that. So molar mass of this compound becomes, we simply come here and say, PB, okay, N, 206. So let's quickly calculate the molar mass of this compound, which is PB N206. So PB here, atomic mass given the question, it is 207 plus nitrogen atomic mass in the question, it is 14. But we have two atoms of nitrogen, so we simply say 14 times 2 plus what is the atomic mass of oxygen there? It is 16. So we have six atoms of oxygen, so 16 times 6. So what becomes the molar mass? of this compound when we actually press our calculator we get the molar mass of the compound to be 331 grams per mole okay so this is the molar mass of this particular compound 331 grams per mole now after doing this we have to go over and solve for the percentage composition of each element that makes up this compound and we already know that we have three elements making up this compound which is lead nitrogen and oxygen so let's solve for the percentage composition of the first element i'm seeing which is lead so percentage composition of lead which is pb now it must be noted that we have just one atom of lead in this particular compound we have just one okay you can see it here we have just one so i simply write here to be one atom of lead is equal to now let us apply the formula you can see the formula here so what is the atomic mass of lead in the compound it is 207 so here becomes 207 times what is the number of atom of lead we have just one atom of lead so we simply write it to be one over what is the molar mass of the compound which is 331 grams or more times 100 so we say equal to so let's quickly write for all the elements and let's solve and get the answer so next is percentage composition of the next element which is nitrogen n but to be specific we have how many atoms of nitrogen two atoms so it becomes uh the uh, atomic mass of nitrogen which is 14 so to be here the atomic mass of the element which is 14 in this context times the number of atom of uh, oxygen which is two you can see it here over three three one times hundred is equal to now lastly percentage composition of the last element which is oxygen and how many atoms of oxygen do we have we have six atoms so it becomes 16 times 6 okay because the atomic mass of oxygen is 16 times the number of atoms which is 6 over 331 times 100 so when we press our calculator we get an answer we get the percentage of each element making of this compound so let's do that so for the first is 207 times 1 over 331 times 100 so we are having 62.54 percent 62.54 percent and for the next which is up. Uh, 14 times 2 over 331 times 100, we are having 8.46%. And lastly, 16 times 6 over 331 times 100, we are having 29.003%. Now, these are the percentage composition of each element that makes up this compound, which is lead to trioxonitrate 5. Now, to be sure if your answers are correct, you must add the percentage. So if you get 100% at the dot, know your answers are correct. So let's do that and check if our percentage, our total percentage, will give us 100. So let's do that. 62.54 uh, plus 8.46 plus 29.003 percent so we actually got 100 percent okay to be specific 100.003 percent okay so basically this is the percentage composition of each element making up this compound which is led to trioxone 95 which has a chemical formula to be pb into bracket no32 or written as this Okay, you know, you have to write that this so that when you are solving, it becomes so easy. So let's quickly move over to the next question. Now, let's quickly move over to the second question. Now, the question says, a gaseous metallic chloride 
MCLX. So it means that this X here is what they're actually asking us to calculate for. Consists of 20.2% of M by mass. The formula of the chloride is, so these are the options to the question. Now, to solve this question is actually very easy. Now, in the look of things, without me even solving, I can actually get the answer without stress. Now, let me quickly say that. Now, you can see that they gave us the atomic masses of the element making up this compound, which is MCLX. And the atomic mass of this M, which is unknown, is 27. Now, if you are very familiar with atomic masses of various elements of the periodic, periodic table, mean I'm to deduce that this particular atomic mass I'm saying is the atomic mass of a very popular metal, which is aluminum. Yes, this is the atomic mass of aluminum. Now, looking at aluminum, aluminum here has a charge of plus three. So, this is something you must take note of. Aluminum, it is plus three when it comes to its charge. Now, since I've already, I've already deduced that this particular atomic mass I'm seeing is that of aluminum, I simply say this is aluminum, and me already know that this particular element here has a charge of plus three. And it's this um, an unknown element actually is aluminum, and basically the other element making up this compound is chlorine. And I still know that chlorine has a charge of minus one. So what will happen now is to simply exchange the charges. It means that three comes here and one comes here. So when this happens, I'm going to have Al1, okay, coming here. That's how compounds are formed. And three go going here becomes Cl3. And I simply change it back to the way the compound is. And this aluminum, let me just say it is unknown, as given the compound, say M. CL3. So looking at this particular option, option C becomes my answer. But if now we don't know the particular element here, we have to solve. So how do we solve this particular question? It is very easy. We'll use the concept of empirical formula. Now, how do we go about it? Now watch. Now I simply write M here and I simply write CL. We are looking for X. So let's see how it will be solved. Now, for, according to the question, the percent by mass of M is 20.2%. Now, what becomes the percent by mass of chlorine? It must be noted that percentage is over 100. So for me to get the percent by mass of chlorine, I simply subtract this from 100. So it means that percentage of 100, so 100 minus this one, which is 20.2%, that's 100% minus this, I'm going to have 100 minus 20, 0.2 percent that's 79.8 percent so it means that in this particular question they only gave us a percentage of m definitely the remaining percent will go to the other element now in this context the percentage of this becomes 79.8 percent now this percentage will be changed to masses okay this percentage will be changed to masses so i'm having 20.2 grams and 79.8 grams next is to divide by their atomic masses that is the step divide by their atomic masses divide by their atomic masses so i'm to divide by the atomic mass of m which is 27 and divide by the atomic mass of chlorine which is 35.5 next step is now let's divide and see what we have so 20.2 over 27 that is 0.75 Okay, that's moles though, because like saying the mass over the molar mass of this particular element, okay? But just understand the concept whenever you see something like this, you change the percentage to mass in grams, so you write that and divide by the atomic mass. Don't forget that. You divide by the atomic mass, so let's do this. So we're having 79.8 over 35.5. That is 2.25, yes. Now, next step is to divide by the smallest. Now, looking at both values, which one is smaller? This is smaller, so 0 0.75 will go. So when this happens and we divide like this, we are going to have one here, definitely. And here becomes 2.25 over 0 0.75. That is 3. Yes, you can see that we divided by the smallest and we had for the chlorine to be 3 and ML, sorry, N specifically is 1. So what becomes the chemical formula of this compound? It becomes M1. CL3. So when we join them together, we're having MCL3 as what we did initially, which is option C. So you can see how questions like this 
how being tackled. So let's quickly move over to the next question. Now let's get into the third question. The third question says, calculate the number of protons, electrons, neutrons of C106. What element is this? This is carbon. Now, in the look of things, they are asking us to get the protons, electrons, and neutrons for this atom. Now, me looking at this, I am actually seeing something. I can see pain. So, they are asking us to get the pain of this atom. Now, to do this is very easy. And in the look of things, this particular atom is a neutral atom. It is without a charge. So, me seeing this, I simply come here and write X, I write A, I write Z. Now, when we have something like this, we have to write something like this so as to remember the concept. Now, what is A called? A is called atomic mass. And if you want to call it that, we can simply call it mass number. So these are the possible names for A. A is called atomic mass or mass number. Or lastly, if you want to call it that, we simply call it nucleon number. We simply call it nucleon number. So... Uh, the possible name for A is atomic mass, mass number, or nuclear number. Now, what becomes the meaning of Z? Z is basically called atomic number or proton number. So these are the possible names for Z. So with this information, let us learn how to get the protons, electrons, and neutrons for an atom. Now, it must be noted that from the look of things, what did I call Z? I called it atomic number, and it's the same as proton number. So definitely for us to get our proton number, our proton number is definitely going to be Z, because atomic number and proton number are the same. So if our atomic number is Z, proton number becomes Z. So whatever value we see in the particular question we have to solve here, that becomes our proton number. Now, what is our electron number? It must be noted that the proton number and the electron number for a neutral atom, there's an atom without a charge at the same. You can see that this particular atom is without a charge. Same applies to this. So it means that the electron number equals our proton number and our proton number equals our Z. So this Z here should be the electron number. Now, lastly, how to get our neutron number? Neutron number is calculated by saying atomic mass minus atomic number. Mass number minus atomic number. So any of this word minus atomic number. So from the look of things, neutral number we calculated by saying A minus Z. So let's, with this information, let's come in. How do we get a proton number? From the look of these things, are proton number, so it is become six. How, what is our electron number? Our electron number is same as our proton number. So same applies to it. It becomes six. Now let's get over to the fourth question in this series. Now the question says, how many unpaired electrons are in the 3D 6 orbital? So um, definitely the answer is here, okay, in these options. So I'm going to teach us how to get the answer without stress. Now, it must be noted that we have various orbitals when it comes to the atomic structure. We have the first of them, the S orbital, we have the P orbital, we have the D orbital, we have the F orbital, we have the G, the H orbital. Well, let's stop here for the level of our exams now it must be noted that whenever we want to draw the uh, numbers of boxes for our s orbital we simply draw just one box there are reasons to this so i have a video which i've explained how this works so i'm going to put the link up here so you can check it out and watch and understand the concept fully meanwhile we just have to take note that whenever we are drawing for the s orbital we simply draw one box for the p orbital we simply draw three boxes okay there are reasons to this though for the d orbital we draw five boxes okay one two three four one two three four five and lastly for our f orbital we draw seven boxes one two three four five six one two three four five six seven so these are the boxes for the f orbital but in this question they're asking how many unpaired electrons are in the three d6 orbital so first of all according to a rule which is called Hans rule it states you have to fill electron in this orbital singly before pairing takes place so i have to fill here one we have six of we have six of them the three d6 so i'm going to fill singly first one two three four and five so you can see our field five so how many is remaining okay to, to actually complete it three d6 orbital just one so I'll come here and fill, fill it so we have one two three four five six so how many unpaired electron can i see i can see just four unpaired electron yes they are unpaired okay so the answer becomes option c you have four unpaired electron now whenever we have unpaired electron seen in an atom we simply say that particular atom is 
paramagnetic okay so there are reasons to this though i have videos which i'll provide here in the description section so you go watch them and understand the concept fully so let's quickly move over to the last question on this series which is question five because in each video i'll be solving just five questions that cut across various concepts in chemistry so you get to understand them better meanwhile at the end of this video i'm going to put here some practice questions so you can practice with and provide the answers in the comment section below so let's quickly move over to the last question for this video now let's get over to the last question on this particular video okay i'll be creating other videos on this series we're going to solve 100 so 100 chemistry calculation question so stick and stay tuned to these videos watch them it's going to help you greatly so let's quickly go over to the last uh, question for this particular video series so if the electronic configuration of an element is 1s2 2s2 2p5 how many unpaired electrons okay how many unpaired electrons are in the orbital so to solve this question is very very easy when they ask how many unpaired electrons are in the orbital i simply go over to the last electronic configuration this is something you must know you go over to the last and pick it 2p5 orbital so now it must be noted previously on the question i solved i said whenever we are talking about the p orbital we draw just three boxes one two Okay, so one, two, three. These are the boxes for our P orbital. Whenever we are talking about the P orbital, we draw three boxes. Whenever we're talking about the S orbital, we draw one box. For when, whenever we are talking about the, the D orbital, we draw five boxes and the F orbital, seven boxes. This is something we must take note of. Now, on this particular orbital, they have it has five electrons. Okay, so we're gonna fill it and check for the one that is unpaid. So first thing first, according to Hans rule, so one, two, three so how many remaining just two four five yes one two three four five so how many unpaired electron we just have one unpaired electron and recall i said whenever we have an unpaired electron seen in an atom that atom it tends to be paramagnetic so if you find this video helpful do well to click the subscribe button also share these videos with your friends so here i'll be providing some questions you'll be practicing with and you provide the answers in the comment section below so here are the practice questions so you solve them and provide the answers in the comment section below now you can see for the first question this says the determine the percentage of uh, by mass of oxygen in this compound so you're actually looking for just the percent of oxygen you have to be careful with how many atoms of oxygen you can see you can see here i can see three atoms of oxygen so you solve this and provide the answer in the comment section below meanwhile for question two calculate the pain of this atom the protons electrons and neutrons for phosphorus atom which is uh, 31 mass number and 15 atomic number very very easy you can solve it meanwhile for number three same applies to number one so you do have to solve and provide the answers in the comment section below so if you find this video helpful do want to click the subscribe button and also share these videos with your friends thank you very much and god bless you